Okay, I am now at a Alianico vine that uh, last year was cut while it was green and growing, just like the examples we were showing. And then the lateral shoots took off in both directions, really an ideal scenario. So we don't have any pruning wounds really close to the head. They pruned it up high to leave a little dieback space so we wouldn't get an infection in the trunk. We left some room at the ends when we pruned it. And there's no problem with leaving that. That's just gonna die back and we're fine. So remember, the, the first thing we do when we come up to a vine like this is we pay attention to the extension. I will tell you, if you did absolutely nothing to this vine and just grew it this year, you'd be okay. But the, the, the problem is we chance over cropping this young vine by leaving everything on it. That's the number one problem or, or concern. The number two concern is if I leave it all and I have to go in and thin it out in the winter, the cuts that I make in the winter are gonna be on hard dormant wood. And what kind of wounds are most likely to get infected by fungal diseases, such as Botrysphaeria, Eutypa, Phomopsis, the hardwood cuts, because they take longer to heal. They take anywhere from three to four days to heal. If I come in here, come on in, and I, I break off a shoot like this one right here, okay? Just break that off. That pruning wound is gonna heal fast, okay? Can you get around there and see that? That is basically a green tissue wound. It's merely a flesh wound, okay? It's not a deep cut. It's gonna heal within a, a few hours, okay? So ideally, you wouldn't do this while it's raining just to be safe, but there's actually no evidence that I'm aware of that rain can cause disease entry into green tissue wounds, okay? It's mostly just those pruning wounds. So the idea here is I pay attention to the extension. I have two good options that could lay down in case one breaks. I put my hand down and then I've got my other shoot. And this one here, I can completely remove, okay? So now I'm starting to get my spur positions. And what I try to do is if I, if I can do it, I favor putting them all on the same side of the cane, okay? Because you'll have your sap flow coming up. It'll hit this spur. It'll hit this spur instead of alternating sides. You can't always get them all on the same side. So you try to when you can. Same thing here. I'm, I'm getting my cane coming up here. I've got my next position. Nice fruitful shoot. I'll put a hand down. That means I can remove that one. I've got two coming out of here. So it's a secondary shoot. I don't need that. I only need one shoot that I can cut back later and create a two bud spur from. Then I'll have my hand width. Then I'll have another two bud spur. Trust me, that's going to get big. That'll be up to three eighths of an inch by the end of the season. And then uh, we've got one right here, which I could use for my extension or one right here that I can use for my extension. So these are gonna be the two options for my extensions. Now, I always get the question, can you keep the fruit on a shoot that you're using for training a, an arm or an extension? And the answer is yes. There's, there's no reason why you can't. Um, this vine is old enough, it's strong enough, and you can crop the, the shoots that are being used as your extension, no problem. So again, extensions are good. I've got every hand width a shoot, and it's spaced perfectly for my cordons and I've got them pre preferably coming from the same side of that cordon, those shoots, so that I can get good flow of nutrients and water. That is an ideal scenario on an ideally trained vine 